Hey, good morning, everyone. So we are doing a little quick video today. Uh, I'm just doing an intro here because we've got some clips coming up from our uh, great trip down to Wine Glass Bar Sawmill down in Phoenix uh, a couple weeks ago. Had a, just a tremendous time. Actually did a live demo on hand and uh, some of you were there. And um, so we just wanted to kind of give you a demo of what they do down there, especially if you're in the Phoenix area and if, or, or whether you have maybe one of these type of places around where you're at where they repurpose uh, wood trees like there's any other kind of trees <laughs> where they repurpose trees instead of going to the landfill they cut these things down for woodworkers like us so um, Rex and LeVar are just awesome people and the end of this video definitely stay till the end because there's definitely an education that I got that you guys will really want uh, interview with Rex and LeVar and they give us a uh, kind of a synopsis of uh, the whole deal with drying your wood if you're dealing with wet wood. It's just phenomenal. I loved it. So anyway, here comes those clips. They'll be kind of random clips until the end, and then it's like a 10-minute interview with, um, with the guys. So thanks so much for watching, guys. If you haven't subscribed, we'd love for you to subscribe, but you guys know all that. We'll get into the clips, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Outside, it's called a sapwood, which the nutrients that, that that the tree uses to stay alive goes up and down the tree in the sapwood. The heart, the, the, the dark wood is called heartwood, and it's it is basically dormant. So as the tree grows, it, it puts on more sapwood, and the heart heartwood. Grows. Do you want the water off? Yeah. And I'm going to come around there and see. Can we squeeze All trees that? have hardwood and softwood, but, or hardwood and, and uh, softwood, but the uh, pine trees, it's the same color. You can't tell it apart. Wow. Yeah. 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 Hardwood, the, hardwood, the, is, is, it turns a different color. That's beautiful. So that would you say about five or six months that'll take to dry to, out? To properly dry it. Gorgeous. Do you have
Almost like an edge guide, I can I can put my finger there and it helps me hold that straight line. That's how I that's how I could get you know, straight lines like that. You could you know glue up a straight edge or, or clamp yeah. a straight edge, but I'm kind of not. A, now on the back side, did you buy this? No, we make them. Okay, I make them. Okay, so, yeah. But why didn't you keep the? I could have, uh, as far as keeping a straight edge on there, is that what you mean? No, keep it more circular, more circular edge. Up in the front, I can see you want to be close to look. Yeah. And when you're turning, but, you, 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 this is more narrow, so yeah. you, you have more room. Well, well, it's other, more stable if it's wider. Yeah, but the other it? thing is, sometimes I'll carve this way. So I want to be able to have that's, it that's typical why I was on asking. Both sides. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to make mine. Yeah, when I'm carving and I'm not doing it in front of a crowd or if I'm doing it on film, because we have a thousand YouTube videos and I do all this on video, gotcha. I, I can't have the cord here because it gets in the way of the camera being able to see it. Uh, okay. So I'll turn it around this way so that I, I, it's typical on both sides. Yeah, so I don't wonder why you did that. That's exactly it. I bought one of those two years ago. Hey, lady. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I don't tell anybody about it, so they don't want to borrow it. I tried this, and I was like, it just changes. It's all perfect. And so he's using that spray. Yeah, the drum master and that Chicago electric stuff is... Yeah, that's kind of lower. Yeah, way. But, you know, they have diamonds in the rough. I mean, even their HVLT sprayer. Yeah, yeah. It is a great little louder. I don't... So with the bigger, the bigger the walls, I can't remember the amount of numbers. 618s yeah. or 616s? Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. find sometimes uh, there's a, the wheel right here gets stuck and you can't... Yeah. So concerned with the... Okay, hey guys, we are wrapping up. We just got done with our demo here at the Wine Glass Bar Sawmill in Phoenix. Had an amazing time, met some great people. Um, and speaking of great people, I want to in introduce you to a couple of great people. Oh, They're behind you. the camera right now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> They're sitting right here with me. So let me uh, let have them introduce themselves, kind of tell you a story about how this whole thing took place. Take it away, boys. My name's uh, Rex Condi. This is LeVar Smith. Our mothers are sisters, so we're cousins. We've uh, known each other all our lives. And uh, we uh, got together about seven years ago and, uh, and decided that uh, we wanted to have a sawmill. Yeah, I asked, I asked my cousin Rex to, <clears throat> and I wanted to have a sawmill. And and uh, as he called me back a few days later and said he always wanted one, and so I bought the kit and and Rex put it together in his welding shop, and it started out as a hobby. And now six years later, it's turned into a business, and we're enjoying doing what we're doing. A thriving business. Yeah. By you know, you guys are doing well down here. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing fine. So what do you do? Tell, tell us kind of the <clears throat> impetus of, of what your main thing is. Well, one thing is in Phoenix, the native trees is basically mesquite, and, and there's a tree called Palo Verde. It has green mm -hmm. bark. Uh, and it's the only tree in the world that has uh, chlorophyll in the bark. Really? But <clears throat> when people move here to Phoenix, they want uh, shade trees, they want uh, landscape trees. And so the uh, nurserymen have searched the world over for trees that w would will thrive in this climate and have brought trees to grow here from places like Madagascar, the Canary Islands, Australia, the Middle East, uh, Africa. And so we have about 50 different species of trees in the landscaping. They're not native, but they grow here and after a while, they either die of uh, disease, or the uh, uh, winds blow them over, or they outgrow their uh, allotted space, mm -hmm. or their roots start to do damage and they have to come out. 
So we work with the arborists who normally take these to the dump to, to uh, get the logs to turn them, to, uh, to mill those logs into lumber. Hmm. Fascinating. When we, <coughs> when we first started, we got four loads of, semi-loads of ponderosa pine. The pon the, we need to say that the ponderosa doesn't grow here in the valley. Yeah. It's a it's a native pine tree that grows at higher elevations in Flagstaff, right. in Arizona, and near Flagstaff. But it's a very soft wood, and uh, it makes really good pallets. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thought we was gonna do siding and flower boxes for the nurseries here out in in the area. With all the ponderosa pine. Yeah. Yeah. And we had no idea all this hardwood was going to the dump and uh -huh. that first <coughs> spring we got them loads in and I went home with a load of, of uh, siding for my barn up in Idaho <laughs> and uh, about July I get a call from Rex and he says oh a whole bunch of trees blew down Litchfield Park should I get them and, and give them away and he had a dump trailer set up with a winch and I said yeah I go get them and and that started it. And we had no idea all this was going to the dump. Crazy. And and we got cottonwood, and then Rex and I are over to Timber Hardwood over Mesa, and the old owner of Timber Hardwood said to Rex, you're halfway there. And he said, you need a kiln. Yeah. And so the next thing was a kiln, and we got a kiln set up, and, and uh, went from there and you just keep adding to the sawmill every year yeah something new and so let me ask you I'm because uh, I've been curious about this I could walk anywhere around here and you've got like you say maybe 50 different species and you know by just looking at it how did you like educate yourself well, in all these different varieties of, of trees called Google Google. <laughs> yeah. Literally, yeah. That, well, that was that's, it. That's part of it. But, uh, <laughs> we we work with the local arborists. Yeah. That, oh. that know the trees, and that they makes sense. they uh, they tell us uh, about the trees, and and a lot of this has been through trial and error. If you go online to find out how to dry uh, lumber you can find information on how to dry it if you live in st louis or atlanta <laughs> yeah. but nobody thinks that we have trees to dry in phoenix <laughs> they think cactus yeah <laughs> so we've had to kind of figure a lot of that out by ourselves and we've we've ruined some wood by drying it improperly yeah and uh and each species dries differently we've had to learn how to 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 dry it uh, so that by the time it does get dry, that it is 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 good wood and is not cracked and split and yeah. warped and twisted uh, as to where it's no good. So, uh, a technical question: What percentage moisture do you consider dry when it's done, when it's ready to go? Oh. Is it different for different woods? Or no, no. The, the, all woods will take on and give off moisture to become equal with their environment. Yep. And in a heated and air-conditioned space, such as a house or an office building, the the moisture content of wood will be uh, nine percent, plus or minus. Okay. And a green tree can have a hundred percent moisture in sure. it. Sure. Yeah. And so you've got to get it from a hundred down to nine. Yep. And do so in a way that the it doesn't twist and warp and crack in, in, in that trip from getting it from hundred percent moisture to nine. Yep. Yeah. Our best our best time milling and drying is in the winter here mm. because when we hit the summer it's just too hot for some of these species and they dry Sp too quick. They split open. Yeah. They yeah. Just but we we can we we've discovered that you can wrap the the bundle of wood in plastic so that the moisture doesn't leave the outside too fast. Ah. Uh, when when we can have humidity here at three yeah. percent, and at that rate, the outside will dry very very fast, and then the the outside will shrink, get a hard crust on it, and trap the moisture on the inside because 
in wood, the moisture that comes out of the cells comes out slowly. It, it migrates slowly to the surface. Uh -huh. But once it gets a hard shell on the outside, it traps it inside. <laughs> and that go. differential between hard on the outside and soft on the inside causes the board to twist and, and crack. And, and, uh, Fascinating. So if we wrap it in plastic, uh, after about a week we can open it and there will be water droplets on the wood. Yeah. We let that dry out and then we wrap it up again. Hmm. And then the moisture from the inside can come out and the outside will not dry if it's in a humid uh, environment. The moisture is con condensation on the inside of the plastic causes the moisture to stay on the surface so it doesn't get that hard crust. Ah, so wow, one of the things so we sense. have to watch for is mildew. Yeah. If we don't dry it out quite fast enough, it will mildew, but a little mildew is very superficial yep. and doesn't hurt the wood. Yep. Fascinating. Yeah, she's given us the. I could go on for hours. Yeah. So I know you I, can, but I'm getting the phone. And I know that these, you know, our watchers, our viewers just got a, a huge education like I did. Um, wow, that's a, a wealth of information. And I know we could go on for a couple more hours, guys. These guys but are tired. Too. They got things to do, and we got a four hour drive home. So we're going to wrap this up, guys. Thanks so well, much thank for watching. You. Thank, you. thank you to you guys. You guys thanks, thanks for, for in, coming down. inviting us to come down. Oh, we yeah. definitely would will and would love to do it again um, so keep us in mind for a future and uh, we made a lot of great new friends down here so anyway guys thanks so Thank much you. for watching we love you and we'll see you on the next one bye